I think I just like, you know, hit her six times. And then I stood up and I was like, like in total shock. I just sat there. I called her name so many times. I shook her so many times. My intentions weren't to hurt her at all. Natavia Lurie was born in the Grant Projects in Harlem, New York on September 7, 1981. Her father died when she was just a baby, so she was raised by her mother, aunt, and uncle. To keep her away from the dangers that surrounded her, her family saved up to put her in Catholic school, but she eventually got herself expelled. Natavia grew to be a very beautiful and smart young lady who excelled in high school, eventually earning herself a scholarship. In the spring of 2002, she left New York for North Carolina State University. But, for unknown reasons, she dropped out and returned to New York City after just one semester. She continued her education and graduated from Hunter College with a degree in business. In 2006, Natavia's life began to take a criminal turn. Under the guise of her supposed love for God, she was hired by a local church to manage their finances. Unfortunately, just months after taking the position, some church officials noticed a lot of money was missing, in fact, over $10,000. The church eventually traced the missing money back to Natavia, and immediately fired her. The police were notified, and a report was filed, but the church refused to press any charges. Later that year, Natavia's then close friend, alleged that she used her identity to open a credit card and cell phone account in her name. Charges were filed, but dropped, after the victim refused to testify. The following year, being newly pregnant and unemployed, Natavia signed up for a temporary staffing agency. Her first job with the company was at Planned Parenthood. But, not long after that, she landed a job as the personal assistant for Miss Linda Stein. Linda Stein was described as the petite powerhouse. She was brash, profane, and even demeaning at times, but she definitely got the job done. In the early 70s, Linda worked her way up from a Bronx elementary school teacher to become the band manager for rock stars like the Ramones, Stephen Forbert, and others. She married Seymour Stein, the vice president of Warner Brothers Records and president of his own record label. The couple had two daughters. Looking for another challenge, in the 90s, Linda left the management business for real estate, and of course, she excelled there too. She closed multiple multi-million dollar homes for celebrities such as Madonna, Angelina Jolie, Bruce Willis, Michael Douglas, Steven Spielberg, and Elton John. Because of this, Linda became well known around Hollywood as the realtor to the stars. Linda was also a survivor. She survived breast cancer in the early 90s and just weeks before her death she was diagnosed with a life-threatening brain tumor that she was also determined to beat. She was still strong but weakened. Her health problems left her debilitated at times, making things like combing her hair difficult, but to the public, Linda was a force to be reckoned with. Linda's closest friends and family urged her to retire, but she responded, let's face it. I am not retiring. I don't know what I'd do. Natavia started out doing mostly secretarial work for Linda like replying to emails and typing up contracts. But soon enough, she earned Linda's trust and the two became close. She was given access to Linda's expensive cars, luxurious Fifth Avenue apartment, and her seemingly limitless credit cards. The temporary agency Natavia worked for paid her poorly, but even she admits, Linda always tipped her for her work. The two were seemingly working out great. For a while. In late October of 2007, about four months after hiring Natavia, Linda found out that more than $30,000 was stolen from her American Express card. After a quick investigation, Linda found out that her credit card was used to pay bills in the name of Natavia Lori, among other things. After discussing the issue with her closest associates, they recommended that she get the police involved. But no, not the fiery Linda Stein. She said she felt so betrayed. She decided she was going to handle the situation herself, and in person. 
During the afternoon of October 30, 2007, Linda called Natavia over to her apartment to confront her about the missing money. About 10.30 p.m. that evening, Linda's daughter Mindy Stein found her mother's lifeless body lying face down in the pool of blood in the apartment. The coroner ruled that Linda Stein died due to blunt impact trauma to the head and neck. She was 62 years old. Linda Stein's funeral was held on November 2, 2007, at the Riverside Memorial Chapel in New York City. Many mourners attended including Whoopi Goldberg, Brett Ratner, Clive Davis, Sting, and Paul Schaffer. Both Madonna and Elton John issued statements grieving the loss as well. An investigation ensued. The tabloids were fixed on the violent murder of a longtime socialite which put even more pressure on investigators. They initially looked at Linda's ex-boyfriends and business rivals as suspects, but they were all quickly cleared. They then requested the video footage of Linda's building around the time of the murder. They were shocked to see Natavia, going up to Linda's apartment with a folder. But they saw her come back down with several bags. The following day they brought Natavia in for questioning. What the heck is going on? You know, I'm like, why am I here? Like, what's going on? How did I get to this point? You know, I'm asking myself that. And I'm like, looking at her like, okay, what's wrong with her? You know, because she just looks crazy right now. Her hand is, you know, going like that. And then she had like her, um, it's like a wooden baton type thing, you know. Is it um, made of wood or some other material? It's wood. Um, and what is it used for? Yoga. Yoga, she goes for a walk. Okay, and can you describe it to me? Um, it's like, I don't know if you ever see people do yoga. They put it on their shoulders. They stretch. They turn. It looks like a king. And how long is it about? Um, probably like the, the length of a king, but without that hook. Uh -huh. So she's pointing the king at me now. Right, so I uh, moved the cane. You know how you just like slap it. Where were you? Still on the couch. Mhm. Mm so I'm still on the couch. <laughs> so she's like waving the cane and stuff at me. <laughs> then it's like I don't know. Like after that remark and stuff, and you know her screaming and yelling, I just snatched it from her. I saw her took it and it's like, I just hit her with it. Where about her body? Like, right here. But yeah, it's long. Right. So, you know, okay. it like reached. So you hit her the first time in the back of her head and then what happened? And I did it like a couple more times. On her head? After the first time she fell? And then you continued to hit her on the head with the stick? Yes. Do you know how many times you hit her? That wasn't myself. I don't. I can't count. It was just like... <laughs> I was mad. I was confused. I was angry. Paranoid. It was like... A feeling like I never had before. <laughs> it was like... It felt like she was like my worst enemy, you know? So it's like, how do you go from somebody, you know, like a best friend, you know, to an enemy, you know? According to prosecutors, Natavia struck Linda at least 24 times in the head and face with Stein's three foot long yoga bar, which was never recovered. She covered Linda's head with a towel while she took the time to try to scrub away the evidence. At some point, Linda's phone rang. Natavia answered it and told the caller, Linda couldn't come to the phone. 
She then stole Linda's credit cards and ID from her purse. Next Natavia flipped her pants inside out to hide the bloodstains and calmly walked out of the posh apartment building. In the hours after the murder, Natavia continued to run the errands Linda had scheduled her to complete. She also left her voicemails. Hey Linda, it's Natavia. Just want to let you know that I'm leaving work at 5.30. Hopefully the walk in the park was actually good. Um, I left everything upstairs um, at the door and Seymour called. Um, he said just give him a call back if he had a question to ask you. And I hope that the showing goes well with Ursula. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. So if you get this before 5.30, you can just call me. If not, talk to you later. Bye. After that, Natavia continued to use Linda's debit card to withdraw over $800 in cash from different ATMs. The NYPD expected the case to be open and shut since they had a mountain of evidence, including Natavia confessing to the murder on tape. But no. Natavia changed her story and took the case to trial where she pled innocent. She alleged that law enforcement coerced her to confess while she was under duress. The police vehemently denied that claim. She also alleged that Stein's daughter, who found her mother's bludgeon body, was the one responsible for the murder. And she did it for the insurance money. The prosecutors argued that Linda was diagnosed with a life-threatening brain tumor just weeks before her murder, there was no need for her daughter to plot on her life. In addition to the Stein plot, Natavia's lawyers pointed to the lack of physical evidence directly tying Natavia to the crime scene. The murder weapon, a yoga bar, was never recovered nor were any bloodstained clothes directly linking her to the murder. They also argued the lack of motive. From their perspective, Natavia had no reason to kill her boss. The prosecutor argued that Natavia was seen on surveillance leaving Linda's home with several bags she didn't come in with. Alluding to Natavia carrying out evidence. And, despite her current claims, Natavia gave a detailed confession. The trial went on for weeks. On several occasions during the trial, Natavia's family members had to be removed from the court for their inappropriate comments and outbursts towards the Stein family. The jury never bought into Natavia's claims that she was caught up in some elaborate plot, created by Mindy Stein, to get her mother's insurance money. Consequently, at the age of 26, Natavia Lori was convicted of second-degree murder and three counts of grand larceny. She was sentenced to 32 years to life in the Bedford Hills Correctional Facility for Women in Westchester County, New York. She began her stay on May 12, 2010, and she will be eligible for parole in 2035. Natavia and her family continue to maintain her innocence. Her attorneys have filed an appeal. While incarcerated, Natavia gave birth to a healthy baby girl. She is currently in the custody of Natavia's mother and stepfather.